the Newton Jane Doe, also known as Allison Mills, identified as Mary Angie Cohen. On May 14, 1985, a woman was found injured and unconscious off the side of the Georgia Highway 91, north of Newton, Georgia. She had injuries consistent with falling from a vehicle. She had with her a pillow that said Allison Mills on it, which is how she got her nickname. They would go ahead and take her to the hospital in Albany, but she passed away 17 days later, on June 1, 1985. She never regained consciousness. It would be determined that the cause was blunt force trauma to the head, and they believed it was from the accident that it may have been falling from a truck or even a car. They were able to send a sample of her bones to a private company for isotope analysis in 2012. Often the isotope analysis isn't a great way at identifying anyone, but it's the cheapest tool they have at hand, involving testing their remains. The authorities didn't give up, and 10 years later, as so many people were finally getting their names, the GBI would partner with the FBI, and they would submit to Othram Labs. Othram is at the forefront of this identification right now. Or at least it seems that way from where we stand, because a lot of the videos that I do on this channel come from identifications from Othram Labs. NamUs is the one who funded this case. They successfully extracted her DNA and began genealogical searches using the public DNA kits. And as we know, that's either GEDmatch or Family Tree, or perhaps both. It took less than a year, and they would find they likely had a name, believing she was Mary Cowan, who went by the name of Angie. They would reach one of her kids, and they tested the child's DNA, and it came back showing a parent-child relationship, which confirmed it. It would turn out that Angie or Mary Hammett Hall Cowan, as she was legally known, disappeared at the age of 28 from Florida in late May of 1985. And this, of course, is the same month that she fell from a vehicle, possibly while hitchhiking. She was found on June 1, 1985, in Newton, Georgia. 37 years would pass before she was identified on January 31, 2023. If anyone has any information on what happened to Angie or why, please contact the number on the screen. Angie Cowan went unidentified for 37 years. Had Angie lived, she'd be 65 years old today. The Green County John Doe, identified as Frank Connell. Frank lived in Rensselaer, New York in 2007. The 47-year-old man decided to go out for a drink on April 20th, which was a Friday. He was last seen between the hours of 9.30 and 11.45 p.m., drinking at Gibson's Bar at 852 Broadway in Rensselaer. And afterwards, he traveled to a nearby bar named Den Dens. Frank worked at a sheetrock business that was owned by his family, and he was responsible. It was really uncharacteristic of him to miss work. But miss work he did, and he also missed a concert that he had tickets for. As a result, his family would quickly report him missing. The police would respond with two bloodhounds, and after smelling pants that Frank had worn, they used this scent to travel through the city to find where he went. It eventually led to a boat dock on Broadway, and they continued up to the river, leading police to believe he perhaps jumped into the Hudson River. They considered the circumstances of his disappearance to be suspicious, but no one really knew for sure what happened. Did he jump? Did someone push him? Or was this a false lead? There was a suggestion then that the five foot five, blonde haired, blue eyed man took his own life. His friends came forward and said they saw no indication that he had any sort of depression or was struggling in any way. There was no indication he would have taken his life, but then where was he? His apartment didn't have any signs of foul play either. There was no indication there was a struggle or anything of the sort. A psychic would come forward, a woman named Ann Fisher. She would walk that same scene in 2008, saying she did not get the feeling that someone took Frank's life. 
What his family did not know is that in 2017, a man was searching for arrowheads in Coxsackie, New York, and instead of finding arrowheads, he found a skull near the Hudson River. It would turn out that Frank had gone into the river just as most originally believed, though no one knows why. Frank Connell was missing for 16 years and an unidentified John Doe for five. He was found 25 miles away from where he went missing. Had he lived, he'd be 63 years old today. The Bucks County John Doe, identified as Richard Thomas Alt. In June of 1986, a fisherman would find a skull along the banks of the Delaware River in Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Because he lived in Buckingham County, he would take the skull to the Buckingham Township Police, which was about 20 miles away from where he found it. No other remains were found, and there was little investigation that could even be done as a result. It's crazy to think how far we have come since 1986, as they had no idea what would come later. Now it's happening pretty fast, but back then they had no idea they would ever find the names of these John and Jane Doe's. They did the best they could, and they tried to estimate what a person looked like. Even that is better now, as they can use a computer now to approximate it, instead of the clay that they used so long ago. They would eventually do his DNA and enter him into NamUs, but they had no real leads. Then, in September of 2022, Othram Labs would get the case, and this was funded by Audio Chuck. It was Othram that would, at the end, do the DNA needed for genealogy, and they would come up with a name as to who this was. The research would lead to a 49-year-old Florida woman that they suspected was related to the man. She would tell detectives she was 11 when her father went missing from Trenton. Her father's name was Richard Thomas Alt. She would explain that her dad went missing with his girlfriend. The girlfriend's remains were found, but he was not. They would manage turning her DNA around in four days, eager to prove that she was in fact the child of Richard Alt. And she was. Richard Thomas Alt was reported missing to the Trenton Police Department in 1985. He had actually last been seen on Christmas Eve 1984 when he saw his parents. Early on, they would suspect that he and his girlfriend were victims whose lives were taken. Four months after they were last seen, in April of 1985, the girlfriend was found in that same Delaware River, but there was no sign of 31-year-old Richard Alt. They had long believed he was gone forever and that he was a victim. The Bucks County DA closed their case, given it was pretty clear the crime didn't happen in Bucks County. Anyone with information now must call the Mercer County Prosecutor at the number I've given on the screen. Richard Thomas Alt was missing for 38 years, and an unidentified John Doe for 36. Had he lived, he would be 69 years old today. The Columbus, Georgia John Doe, identified as Matthew Turner. In February of 2021, a man was located in a wooded area behind Dunkin' Donuts, in Columbus, Georgia. The GBI, which is the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, would create a forensic sketch and they would release it in hopes of determining who the man was, or at least that it might provide some leads. They were able to tell he was around 5 foot 10 and 150 pounds. They were unable to determine anything more and even what caused his passing was a mystery. In January of 2023, the Muskogee County Coroner's Office released the information that said that 41-year-old Matthew Turner, who was reported missing in January of 2019, had been found. He was last seen in Uptown Columbus, near Front Avenue, exactly four years earlier, in January of 2019. I wish I could tell you more about him, but this is all I've found so far. Matthew Turner was reported missing from the same area where he was found. He was a missing person for four years and an unidentified John Doe for two. Had he lived, he'd be 44 years old today. 
As always, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss new episodes. So if you enjoy the content here and you're not sure, take a peek to see if you're subscribed. Take care of yourselves and each other.